welcome back to my channel it's Ashley here and if you are new hey girl hey so in this video today I'm gonna be sharing the top five furniture makeovers that I've done on my channel if you're new and you have not seen my furniture makeovers I will have a full list of all the makeovers that I've done on my channel linked down below so with that let's get into makeover number one the first furniture makeover that I'm going to share is this end table that I picked up from my mother-in-law. So what better way to transform something and save it from going into the landfill than to turn it into a bench seat? And that is exactly what I did in this DIY. Okay, so the first thing I did with this piece is I started to remove the drawers and I started to just disassemble everything. So I used my drill to do that. I used my staple remover or upholstery staple remover, whatever you wanna call it. And then I also used my crowbar to help me detach the top from the bottom. All right, so I made this video two years ago and at that point I was nervous about using like the table saw and all that stuff so I literally had my husband do measurements and make the cuts and stuff for me but if you watch my channel now and you've been with me since the beginning you guys know I have grown and I do everything myself so cutting and measuring and all that stuff so anyways now we are putting just the bench part together. So this is just a piece of plywood that I picked up from Lowe's. And all we're doing here is just getting our cuts and measurements right so we can add this to the bottom. Now that we have the plywood part put in where the seat is going to be, um, we're now gonna be working on the back. So with the back, I'm just taking a piece of wood and my husband, again, is doing all the cutting. <laughs> is cutting them down to the size that we need and then now I'm going to nail the seat portion down and I am going to sand that smooth and then I'm going to sand around just the end table in general just making sure I don't have any scratches and dings and stuff like that I can just smooth them out with my palm sander all right so now I'm going to start to paint this piece and the color that I'm painting it first is hazelnut by Waverly and I'm mixing it all together guys I'm using a chip brush do not use a chip brush when you are painting your furniture I mean you can use it because obviously I did and got it done but it is not the best brush to use like a chip brush is really good to use for staining like wood and stuff like that um, I wouldn't recommend using it to actually paint um, you can get it done I got it done obviously but it's not the brush that you're gonna want to use to paint your pieces with so moving along I filled in those holes that I was just showing you here with Bondo which is my favorite thing to fill holes with and repair things with and now I'm taking my palm sander and I am just sanding that smooth okay so now that I have my coats done on here I'm gonna start to just use a lighter color I honestly don't know what color this is so I will have this video linked down below um, so you can watch the original one um, but I'm just gonna start to use my putty knife and just make some design on the side don't know what I was doing guys but this is what I <laughs> this, this is what I did for this piece okay so after that I'm just taking this foam cushion here and I am cutting it to the size that I need and I'm adding this to the bottom so that we can have that cushion for our seat okay so moving along I'm just gonna be adding this fabric to the bottom here and then I'm going to add my wood to the side just to make sure that you know the fabric is gonna be nice and taut and all that good stuff um, and fit in place and then I'm going to be using some upholstery nails and I'm going to nail them to the front Next, I'm going to just be staining my wood um, and then I am going to, as the wood dries, I'm going to take my um, staple gun and I stapled the fabric to the cushion part of my seat. And then after I got that done, I added my wood and I nailed those to the sides and the back. Okay, so I'm using my hubby again, <laughs> and he is cutting the top for me. So this top is going to um, be like, I guess you can say like the armrest part of the bench. And we're gonna place this top back, but it's going to be the technically like an armrest for the bench, as you can see here. All right, so after that, I just nailed this to the top, and then I took my belt sander and I sanded down um, 
the top and then I painted it and then I took my Bondo again and I filled in all of the nail holes and I painted it the same that I did with the body and then after that I took this trim and I just took my hot glue and I glued it around to hide the gaps in between the top and where I have my wood planks. All right, and here's the end result. The last thing I did was add this little hardware piece that I got from Hobby Lobby and the bottom portion now you can use as storage. So I love how this turned out. This was my first time ever actually like really reconstructing a piece of furniture and I just love how this turned out. Okay, so for my next little furniture makeover, this was actually one of my first client pieces that I ever did and I learned a lot from this, um, especially with giving people quotes and everything because this piece was in such bad shape um, and what I did to this and how much I charged for it was definitely didn't match, but it's okay, you learn and I learned from this piece. Okay, so the next thing I did was I started to remove the hardware. Then after I removed the hardware, I started to sand down this piece, just making sure that I was getting rid of any like imperfections that I saw up top. Then after I did that, I just took my blower. I love to use my blower and I just started to blow away any debris that I had. And then I wiped down the piece. Next, I started to fix the veneer on the side that was coming up. So you can definitely, I could have just started to peel up all of the veneer and then add my bondo but i felt like this was going to be a little bit simpler and a less work so i'm just taking my e6000 and i'm going to use my clamps and i'm going to clamp everything down um, and glue it and let it dry and then i took my bondo and i filled in those areas and then i took my sander and i just sanded everything smooth Okay, so then the next step after that was I started to paint this piece. So the color, don't remember the color, but this original video will be linked down below and the color will be on there. Um, but I painted everything and then I distressed my piece using my palm sander, but then now I'm gonna come back with my manual, I call it my manual palm sander, and I just started to sand smooth everything. So the next thing that I did was I started to plank the top, so I'm using my wood clamps and my wood glue to attach this to the top and my nail gun. So after I got everything nailed, I then used my dark walnut stain and I stained the tops. And then I took my jigsaw and I just removed the excess wood that I didn't need on the sides. The last thing I did was I cut some more wood and then this wood that I'm cutting, I actually decided to plank the inside of this piece as well. Okay, and that was it for this piece. Of course, I just sealed this with wax and then the top I sealed with um, a polyurethane. Honestly, I did not want to give this piece to them because I loved it so much. Needless to say, they were super excited about it and they just fell in love when they first saw it. The hardware I got from Hobby Lobby and I just think everything just came together so well. And this is literally by far like my top favorite that I did. All right, so for this next little furniture makeover, I am going to be redoing this vegetable bin that I believe I picked up from either Goodwill or Habitat for Humanity. So the first thing that I did with this piece was I gave it a really good cleaning. This piece was just very, 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 very nasty. So I made sure I cleaned every single inch of this piece. The next thing that I did was I removed the hardware and I removed the hinges and the doors from this piece. And then after that, I just took my citrus strip and I started to strip the top. So after that, I just took my palm sander and I think I used about 80 grit. Um, and I started to remove um, the excess uh, varnish and just making sure that it was nice and smooth at the top. And then I started to remove the wiring from these doors. 
And then I did the same thing with um, the doors. I used my citrus strip and then I came back in with my palm sander and sanded everything down. After I got my doors stripped and sanded, I'm just taking my weathered oak here and I am staining it this new color. The next thing that I did was I filled in all of these nail holes here that were on the side and any other imperfections that I could find using my Bondo. And then after I added the Bondo, I just sanded it down each um, each of the sides after I gave this piece a nice sanding I'm just taking my staple remover and I am removing the back here and then I am going to wipe this piece down again to get it prepped for painting I already primed this piece so now I'm just adding um, I believe this color I'm pretty sure is sheepskin that I'm using for this and I did about two coats the next thing I did was I took a piece of fabric that I got from Joann's and I added this to the back. So to do that, I just cut what I did not need and I took my Mod Podge and I Mod Podge this to the back. Um, what I like to do first is spray everything down, get it nice and wet and then add the glue and then um, just work it that way using my spray bottle, using my glue and my brush to attach this to the back. The next thing that I did was I picked up these new hinges that I purchased from Lowe's to replace the old ones because they were just really rusted out. And I'm just going to take this Rust-Oleum spray paint that I matched to a T with um, the new hardware that I'm going to be using and I just sprayed that on the hinges. Next, I just attached my hinges and the doors back onto this piece and then I took these beautiful clasps that I got from Hobby Lobby and I attached them to the front. So instead of putting the wiring back, I actually went to Lowe's and I got them to cut out pieces of glass for me and I'm going to attach those to the doors using these plastic retainer clips that I got from Amazon. So all I did was took my drill and I drilled my holes and then I added those screws and I added the retainer clips to each side of the glass. So I love, love, love how this piece turned out. This piece has so much character to it from the raw wood um, that I just kept there instead of painting the frame for the doors um, to the off-white cream color uh, to the clasp. I love the clasp. That's like my favorite thing of this whole piece. And then also the fabric that I added to the back. Just those little sudden changes really brings a lot of character to this piece and I love to do that with any piece that I make. Um, this piece is still with us to this day because I just could not give it up. Okay, so moving right along. So for this next piece, I literally picked this piece up from out of our neighborhood that we were living in at the time. They were giving this away and we had like this neighborhood Facebook group and they were like, whoever wants it can come get it. So I definitely snatched this up and now I'm making it over. So the first thing I did, of course, was I started to wipe everything down, clean this piece up really, really well um, to get it prepped for painting. I then removed all the hardware, all the drawers, and I started to attach pieces of veneer that was missing, again, using my E6000 and my clamps. Next, I've started to prime this piece, so I'm just using my critter sprayer and I'm spraying on a coat of primer. I did this because this piece had a little gloss to it and I just wanted to make sure that my paint adhered to this piece, so I'm coming in, priming it first, and then I'm gonna come in with the color that this piece is going to be. So as you can see here, I stripped the whole front of this dresser and the top two drawers, and then the other four I painted. So now I'm going to start to paint uh, well paint I'm gonna start to blend the four drawers uh, down here at the bottom so I'm using the moss color from Waverly and I'm also going to be using white and I'm going to be blending everything together if you want to see this full out process again I'm gonna have all of these uh, makeovers linked down below okay so the next thing that I did was I started to plank the top so with this top I love how I planked it because I did it a little different than just the regular just plank them one after another I actually cut the front piece smaller and then I cut my other pieces and flip them so that they will be vertical instead of horizontal. So after I got everything cut out, I just came in again with my dark walnut and I started to stain the top and then I also stained the front and the drawers. 
All right, so after I stained the front part, I came in with my paint sprayer and I started to just spray the um, outer edge of the front because I didn't like that it was all the same wood color. Um, so I just taped off the areas that I didn't want to get paint on and I took my paint sprayer and I started to spray on that green color. Okay, so now I'm gonna start working on this middle portion here. If you're wondering what happened to the drawer, the drawer broke. So instead of fixing the drawer and everything, I just decided to turn this into like a cute little cubby space um, that was planked. So all I did was I just took some scrap pieces of wood that I had and I cut everything to size. So this plywood part here, I'm gonna add to the side here so that you won't see the drawers on the side and then I cut all the wood that I needed and I started to attach everything of course using my nail gun. The last thing that I did was I added new hardware to this piece. So the hardware is from Hobby Lobby and I absolutely love it because I think it's like the icing on the cake um, and I just drilled in my new holes, added those, um, the hardware pieces and then I sealed the body with wax and then the top was sealed with polycrylic. Well, not polycrylic, polyurethane. All right, so here's the end result of this piece. So I have like pictures and footage of this because don't ask me, I like literally lost the footage. Um, but I love how this piece turned out. It's very rustic and I love the green with the contrast of the dark walnut. This was literally, I'm gonna probably say all of these are my favorites because they are, it's my top five. Um, but I love how this turned out. I added some wallpaper, as you can see here to the back. And actually that's not wallpaper, that is scrapbook paper. So I added that to the back to give it a little bit more character. All in all, I love how this turned out, and the person who purchased this <laughs> loved it as well. All right, so for this DIY, I loved this dresser when I spotted it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, the detailing and everything of this drawer just caught my eye, and I honestly only paid like $30 for it because these people needed it out, and who was there to go run and get it? Me. So now I'm going to make this beauty over. All right, so you already know what I did. I removed all the drawers and I started to clean this piece from the inside out. I used my blower to just get rid of all this little junk that they had in there. Um, and then I just started to wipe this piece down inside and I also did the drawers as well. Okay, so after I did that, I just came in with my Bondo and I started to add that to all the imperfections that I found and then I took my palm sander and I sanded everything down. Okay, so again, the sides of this piece were like laminate and you know, just had glossy sheen and stuff like that to it. So to make sure that my paint adhered, I am using a primer. So I'm priming this uh, whole thing first and my drawers and then I'm gonna come in with the color that I'm going to be using for this piece. And the color that I painted this piece with is called Slate and it is by Jolie Paint. All right, so after my paint was nice and dry, I came in with my clear wax and I waxed everything down. And then now I'm going to come in with my, with my dark wax and I'm gonna add that dark wax on first. So if you don't know, when you use, um, when you're adding dark wax, you do wanna put a clear wax on first. So when you do add that wax, as you can see here, it's really easy for you to remove it and that is for any colored wax that you're using. After I got my waxing done, now I'm going to start to work on the top and I am just going to stencil this whole top. So the stencil that I'm using, it is a Martha Stewart um, silkscreen stencil and I am just going to take that same color slate, I just mixed it with a little white to lighten it up a little bit and then now I'm going to add this stencil to the top of this dresser and also to the front little part at the bottom, I added this stencil there as well. So after I got my top stenciled, I came back with my clear wax and my black wax like I did for the rest of this piece and I am going to be adding that to the top. The next thing I did was I took some Rub and Buff and this color is Antique Gold and I added that to my hardware. And then after I added the Antique Wax, I just took that same light color blue that I created and I added that to the middle portion of each of the hardware pieces. The last thing I did was I came in and I took a little bit of the Rub and Buff and I added that to the bottom part of my feet. 
All right, so here we are, the end result of this makeover. I love how everything turned out from the stencil top to the hardware with the gold and the blue. Again, this blue color is called Slate by Jolie Paints. And as I said in the orig original video, this reminds me of Princess Jasmine. So if this gives you Princess Jasmine vibes, let me know down below in the comments. Again, all of the furniture makeovers that I showed today in this video will be linked down below, so make sure you check out that description box. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below to let me know what you think. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell so you'll always be up to date with my latest tutorials, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!